Hi, welcome back to Kirstie's classroom. We are working on lab five this week, which is physical properties of minerals. So this video will help you kind of navigate this lab as you're working with it. Okay, so as always, there is some background information to kind of get you back into looking at minerals. And again, you can print these and come back to them at a later date if you wish. Um, so you can work on it independently and then come back and put your answers in. And you always get unlimited tries on the labs. Okay, so you'll click take your quiz. And all of the questions will start showing up. So this first part, part one, is luster. So you'll click on the video and you'll watch the different um, specimens and what their luster is. And then as each mineral is shown, you'll write down what the luster is. So it'll say specifically which one is which. So if you listen and put on closed captioning. Okay, so for this lab, you're working on the physical properties of minerals and this first section is luster. So here we have the first sample, which is galena. Okay, so there's galena and they're in order here. So the first question is the first mineral that'll pop up. So what is the luster of galena? And then you'll just click whichever one you think it is. Okay, and you go through each of the minerals that are in the video. It's all multiple choice here. Then part 2A is when we start looking at hardness. So part 2 in total is hardness, but part 2A is hardness of at-home materials, and part 2B will be the hardness of the actual minerals. So because you can't actually hold minerals in your hand, I do have a hardness test set up or that you will basically create yourself so that you can kind of get an idea of what you're seeing in the video in uh, first hand. So you're gonna find five different objects around the home that you can scratch. So make sure that it's stuff that you can actually scratch and you're not gonna get upset that you scratched. Um, so plastic bottle, glass bottle, penny, iron, nail, soap, um, whatever you can find. And then you're going to list them in order of softest to hardest. So you're going to try to figure out how you can determine which one is harder than another. Okay, so remember you want to see what is the softest of the materials and what is the hardest. So you need to basically scratch each other, scratch the different um objects that you pick against each other to try to determine which one is the hardest, right? And then write down what methods you use, what was useful, what wasn't. So you can either print this little section out and write on it or you can draw it out on a piece of paper and then you'll submit it as just a photo or a scanned PDF is fine. And that'll be in question number eight. Here's where you, where you will submit your little scan. Okay, and then in question seven it asks you to reflect um, to think about how you um, went ahead and figured out what the hardness of them were, um, what was useful, what wasn't. Um, did you pick any of the hardness um, materials that I showed you in lecture, or did you just use the objects against each other? You'll write that in here. Okay, and then we get into part 2B, which is understanding the mineral hardness. So here we have um, the Mohs hardness scale from 1 to 10. One being the softest at talc and 10 being the hardest at diamond. Okay, so you'll watch each of the videos. So each mineral has its own video where you are going to pick which field tests are true for quartz. So what does quartz scratch? So you'll watch the video and then you'll select all of the ones that will scratch, that quartz will scratch. Okay, if the mineral doesn't scratch those things, then don't select it. Okay, so this is sort of like multiple choice, but it's select all, right? So select all that apply. Okay, so you have quartz, and then based on this information, can you determine what the relative hardness is? So remember that your fingernail is 2.5, the copper wire is 3.5, and the glass plate is 5.5. So if it scratches all three of those things, then it's greater than 5.5. If it doesn't scratch anything, then it's less than 2.5. If it scratches the fingernail but not the copper wire, it is 2.5 to 3.5. If it scratches the copper wire, the fingernail, but not the glass plate, then it's 3.5 to 5.5. Okay? 
And then you'll move on to the other minerals. Okay, we're going to select all that apply, figure out its hardness range based on how the mineral is scratching. So does it scratch the fingernail? If a fingernail scratches the mineral, that means that the mineral is softer than the fingernail. Okay, and if it's softer than the fingernail, it's not going to scratch anything else because all of those other things are harder than a fingernail. Okay, we'll go through a couple of different samples until we get to part three, which is understanding crystal form. Okay, so remember crystal form is the way that a mineral will grow. Okay, this is not what the mineral looks like after it's been broken or been around the block. This is right when it's fresh, brand new, it's, it has just grown into this shape. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to look at this video and observe the different crystals that I show you. And then you're going to give a sketch of each of those. So there's only three of them. And if your sketch isn't perfect, that's fine. I'm not looking for you to be able to draw super, super efficiently. This isn't a drawing class by any means. Um, and then just give a brief description of the shape. Okay, so try to think of what shape you think that is and write that in here. And again, you can print this out, write in it, and then submit it as a photo or scan, or you can draw it on your own piece of paper, submit it as a photo or a scan. You could even do it on the computer too if you wanted to just, if you're that talented with a mouse, you can draw a sketch of the mineral and then type in the crystal shape and then submit it as a Word document or something. Okay. Part four is fracture and cleavage. Now remember, fracture and cleavage are the way a mineral will break. So fracture is random breaking, and cleavage is when the crystal is breaking along specific planes of weakness. Okay, so make sure that you really understood that in the lecture before you move on to here. This calcite smash demo should is just kind of a a demo to help you understand the cleavage planes and how they work. And so every time you smash something with a cleavage plane, it preserves those sides. Okay, so this video here will show you all of the different minerals it'll ask you about. And so for the first one, it'll say like, how many planes does Galena have and at what angle do they intersect? Remember the room scenario. If you've got a box or a room, you've got six sides, divide that by two, and you've got three cleavage planes, right? Because cleavage planes are a pair of set parallel sides, okay? And their angle of intersection in a room should be, unless your room is architecturally different, it should be 90 degrees. But not all of these crystals will have intersections of 90 degrees, so you'll want to pay attention to that. So in the video, make sure you're listening closely because it'll kind of talk about it. Okay, and so there are multiple choice, but just be weary that you need to pay attention to what you're looking at. Okay, so it'll go through all of the different minerals that I talk about, um, halite, fluorite, muscovite, and what their cleavage planes are. And then the last two here are fracture type. What fracture type does pyrite have and what fracture type does quartz have? Remember that quartz can have conchoidal fracturing and irregular fracturing. All right, part five is understanding streak. So this is the color of the mineral in powder form. And so in this video, I take three different uh, minerals and streak them across a porcelain plate. And you'll be able to see what the streak color is. And then over here, you're going to write the elements present. I think I actually have that as a, yeah, I have it multiple choice now. So what color streak did you see for hematite? What did you see for pyrite, galena? and then what elements are present in hematite, and then you'll select those. So you'll use this chart here. It tells you hematite is Fe2O3, and then you'll use the periodic table of elements to figure out what Fe and O are. Okay, so that's how you figure out what elements are present in these minerals. Okay, and then part six is understanding color. So here you've got kind of a two-step thing where we first look at muscovite and biotite and their relative colors. So muscovite's here on the left and biotite's on the right. So you'll look at those two and then you're trying to figure out what the difference is between them because they have all other identical physical properties with the exception of its color. 
and the color is what dictates is is dictated by its chemical formula so you'll find the differences in the chemical formula and that's the metal responsible so for instance they both have OH2 here so that's obviously not responsible for the color because they're the same again here it's the same you have a potassium so what do you think is responsible for the color okay and if you need the periodic table you can reference it up in part five Okay, and then you'll look at quartz and fluorite together, and um, this is a little table that you can fill out as you're working, and then you can answer the questions below, um, but you don't necessarily have to answer or fill in this table and take a photo of it or anything. Okay, so watch this video, and then you want to go back through the lab and find where you looked at fluorite and where you looked at quartz and try to determine what type of properties it has and how you would tell the difference between the two. Okay, so here, as we go through the questions for part six, the metal responsible for the color in muscovite, same thing for biotite, and then what two physical properties of minerals help you distinguish quartz from fluorite? So you want to go back through, like I said, and find quartz and fluorite, figure out what their properties were and where they were different. Okay, and that'll help you tell the difference between the two if, for instance, you have very similar colors in those two. Remember, color is your least useful mineral property, so it's really important to focus on these other physical properties to tell the difference between particular minerals that have similar colors. Okay, and then that's it. Hopefully this video helps you a little bit, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!